Hello, welcome to Clarity Design and uh, we're going to have a little look at rigging in particular. We're going to be looking at creating a skeleton and skinning that to a figure. Um, so you can see there's no hands or feet on this very basic model. Um, and from this hopefully you'll pick up the basics. Um, but uh, the important thing is that we start to think about why we're rigging models and what we're rigging it for. So in this particular example, um, obviously we're not going to be rigging a model that's going to have a jaw, it's got no hands, got no feet, so we don't need any of those details. And really the complexity you put into a rig should be uh, directly relevant to the animation that you are getting out of the rig at the end or you want to get out of the rig at the end. Um, uh, this side saves a lot of time and hassle. So without further ado, let's have a look at how we can make a basic uh, rig or model. First of all, I'm going to switch across from polygons to animation and that gives me access to skeleton and skin up here. Um, you could also find those on the spacebar oh, on the spacebar here um, in the hotbox. Um, so you've got uh, animate skin skeleton down here. Um, uh, and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into, using spacebar again, I'm going to jump into the front view. Um, and this allows me to put uh, joints directly onto the grid and I'm going to switch on snap to grid. Uh, it's just going to make it a little bit easier for me to uh, pop these joints in place. I'm going to switch it to four mode so that I can see straight through my figure and you see where I'm putting the joints but I can still see the outline of the figure in there. So I go to skeleton and inside here, um, I mean this is the main uh, menu we'll be in today um, but you can see that we can uh, reroute skeletons, remove joints, disconnect, connect, mirror and orientate joint. Um, and this one in particular can be very useful if you're uh, having uh, trouble with joints uh, locations or orientation before you start skinning. Uh, joint tool is very top one. We're going to go to joint tool and we'll use the IK handle tool as well today. Um, so let's go joint tool. And this allows me to put uh, joints in. In between the joint is a bone. The bone looks like a triangle. Um, so uh, each one is connected in the chain. So I'll just go up. I'm not putting too many uh, joints in, uh, kind of the middle of the chest bone there, top of the shoulder, bottom of the neck, middle of the head, and top of the head. Um, uh, and it also doesn't matter if these joints poke out because they don't get rendered. Uh, just so you can see what that looks like in the outliner, we've got joint one here, and then I've got joint two, joint three, joint four, joint five, and they're all parented together. Um, so you can see they're using the parent-child relationship that I've talked about previously. Let's just um, spacebar go back into ooh, go back into front view, um, and let's add another joint. So I'll go one, two, three, four. Um, slightly strange here because I've got uh, some weird divisions on this arm which I'm going to be making use of so I'm not actually giving it a proper elbow and that reflects back to um, what I was saying about knowing what you want to get from the rig when you start setting it up um, it might be that your bones and skeleton reflect very closely what happens in a real human figure and it might be that you want to deviate from that to get particular effects happening. Um, let's select that and let's just see what happens because we've got it based around this central area of the object we should be able to mirror it uh, over to the other side so let's mirror that oh, control Z, it did do it but I think it did it in the wrong direction so let's just go into mirror joint options here um, and it should be the uh, y, Z, let's try that one, apply, uh, as if by magic, it's done. So that's one good reason to have your model set up so it's really central in your scene and that it's mirrored across. Um, the way that this model is set up with its arms out wide and its feet slightly apart um, is no coincidence. Um, and you'll see um, that later on this becomes quite important when it comes to skinning the, the, uh, the figure. So I'm going to just going to get the um, uh, joint tool again um, and I'm going to make a chain of joints down the side here. Um, this one's not got so many uh, uh, differences to it so let's just uh, finish that joint there and select the whole joint chain here and I'll go to skeleton mirror joint 
and it's automatically mirrored over to the other side. So this gives us our basic setup. Now, if I press spacebar and go to perspective view, um, it was looking pretty good in the other view, but as you can see here, my joints aren't quite sitting inside uh, my character. Now, one thing I want to do before I go any further is I want to position these joints uh, a little bit more carefully. So I'm going to pick up with this selection tool, um, I'm going to pick up the two, um, oh, uh, the two joints here and I'm going to move them at the same time so they stay parallel uh, and I'm going to switch off snap to grid now because obviously that's not having a very nice effect for me um, and let's shift that up so I can now produce some uh, slightly more accurate uh, positioning for my joints um, this bend that I'm putting into the legs is also important because it helps that when rigging it helps the uh, computer or Maya to work out uh, which direction uh, we want it to bend in uh, or to be the predominant bend direction uh, so again I'll select these two move them forward a little bit and then the next one's out which is there and move that forward a little bit and then do the last one and again this curve on those arms coming forward that's not a coincidence that's been done on purpose to help with the rigging process um, and again we could probably do the same thing with the back just move that in slightly, move that one out slightly, just so that we've got the back bending and the head bending in the right sort of direction for us uh, later on. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that rig now. The only problem is if I select this joint, it only picks up the spine. I want it to pick up the whole of the joint. So I'm going to need to do some joining together here using my middle mouse click. Um, I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to attach it to joint 3. So you see joint 7 is going to attach to joint 3. I'm going to middle click drag up and I'm going to drop it onto joint 3. You see that's connected up now. And you can also see that it's put a bone in across here. And the same joint uh, 11 is going to go to joint 3, connect it up. And uh, my two legs are going to actually go to the central root here. Now, what that means is that when I pick up my central root, it picks up my whole character, meaning I can move the whole character around by controlling this joint. Um, and it means that all of them are in one um, uh, skeletal um, uh, form, uh, which is just what we want when we start to bind this to the skin. The next thing we want to have a look at, here, now that we've got the skeleton all bound up, let's imagine that we've got it renamed um, properly. Um, I'm not going to do that right now. It would be important if I was going to do this for a full rig. So I'll just collapse that tree down. Now what I want to do is I want to I want to bind this up. Now there's two kinds of um, skin binding inside Maya. There's a uh, uh, rigid bind, which is uh, uh, not very commonly used, um, and smooth bind. And smooth bind is used uh, more often than not. Uh, a rigid bind might be useful for something that's similar to a uh, robot where you've got uh, very um, kind of set shapes that are deforming around each other. Uh, the smooth bind is much more what you would see in a human figure or a figure character. So we're going to smooth bind it. All you need to do is select the base of your skeleton followed by the um, uh, mesh. And I'll press 6 there. Um, and uh, then I'm going to bind those together uh, with a smooth bind. Inside the options of smooth bind, uh, we've got uh, a few little options here that we could have a look at. So we can bind it to the joint hierarchy, selected joints or object hierarchy. We're going to leave this at joint hierarchy. Uh, the bind method is closest distance. Now what this is talking about is the distance from the vertex to the joint. So that's what uh, says how much weight each part has got. I'll show you this in a second. And the maximum number of influences, I'm actually going to take that down now to uh, three because uh, this is quite a simple model. Um, and I'm going to hit apply, okay, or bind skin, which will close it down. So my skeleton is now bound up. And if I uh, pick a joint and go to rotate, because you always use rotate with joint tools, uh, not move. Uh, you can see that that's starting to move quite nicely. Um, you might find down here, if I just do a weird rotation with this, that actually you can see that just this other foot down here, this area here, is uh, just deforming uh, a little bit with it as well. So that's something we'd have to sort out with um, our uh, edit weights in a second. Um, and I will just go and have a quick look at that so you can see what's happened. Imagine that each uh, vertex 
is given a, uh, a weight um, out of 100, okay, or 0 to 1 um, with a decimal. And um, let me just find this interactive skin, no, in, uh, paint skin weights tool. Um, so each one of these vertex has been given a weight. Um, Let's double click that to get that open. So joint 15, you can see most of the weight for joint 15 is in this area, but it's spreading all the way down here. If I wanted to make that more localized so that the bend at the knee was a bit more profound, I could start playing around with this uh, and, and painting skin weights, but I'm going to look at that in another tutorial. Um, so that's edit skin weights, uh, which we can look at another time. What I want to do just before I finish is just show you the um, uh, in, uh, inverse kinesthetics tool. Um, the IK handle tool. Um, now this is important because if I want to move this hand into here at the moment I'd have to pick up this joint, rotate it round here and then I'd have to move this one, rotate it round and then if it wasn't quite right I'd have to move the other one back a little bit um, and I could keep going with that and I'm just going to undo all those. Um, it's not very easy to move around so what you can do is you can pick up your uh, IK handle tool if you pick one joint and then click on another, it's going to make an IK handle. That's over here. Um, and with the IK handle selected, you now use the Move tool instead of Rotate tool. And uh, Maya will work out the rotation of those joints as needed to position it in a certain position. Okay, so you can see how Maya is doing a lot of joint rotation work for me. The nice thing about this IK handle tool is that I can position the IK handle and I can keyframe that rather than having to keyframe each of these joints in the chain. So it does a lot of work for me. Um, so that's the IK handle tool. I'd encourage you to go and play with it. Yeah.